way it was the world's largest disaster i mean so many persons including animals have been died too many children of the gas affected parents are being born with congenital malformations people who have been affected in bhopal are 48% Muslims, 49% Hindus, and all from lower working class uh, people. It is not only issue related to some area, it is related to Bhopal. Whole Bhopal is affected uh, in some different manner. I had a friend who was working with the carbide and he would always complain that it's not a safe place to work so he was trying to find another job but never really took it very seriously but in 1981 December another friend uh, Muhammad Ashraf he was uh, working on the plant and he got exposed to the the uh, small phosgene leak the death of ashraf really alarmed me and uh, then i started investigating and then i took out all those things and it took almost 9 months for me to write the first piece in september 1982 that was a small weekly newspaper i was publishing and it had and had any impact i would expect but still i didn't give up so i wrote another piece as a follow up bhopal sitting at the top of a volcano second piece which appeared was on october 1st 1982 and 3 days later there was a small leak in the plant and it created such a situation that when the all the neighboring people had to run away i wrote another piece on 8th october saying if you don't understand you all will be wiped out so my another piece on the dangers posed by this plant was published on 16th june 1984 even that didn't work and finally came the night of december 2nd 3rd when this disaster took place ki initially so many people at bhopal they know about i don't know about the uh, union carbide what they are making what they are using raw material nobody is knows except the worker also not much aware of that that is water they are making this is basically they are making the pesticides they are using the mic you know the uh, methyl isocyanide uh, for the as a raw material i was uh, in delhi and back to bhopal in the same day my train was held up to the outside the bhopal station during the my uh, uh visit uh, come from the station to my uh, resident i saw the lot of people uh, uh dying both the sides of the road the old people young women and old women and so many children also they with the women uh, uh, this uh, hands lot of people in silent mode because they are not uh, 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 living they are just uh, dying i was uh, living in, uh, in the old city where my family still lives and that place is uh, quite closer to the carbide plant so even that area was affected i was sleeping and uh, suddenly started suffocating my wife was coughing but we didn't under- couldn't, couldn't understand what it was so I called up the police control room. From there, I came to know that the gas has leaked from the urine carbide plant. There was a feeling in 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 my throat as if there is a pin moving in and up and down. There was a quite uneasy feeling in the throat. I thought since it's maybe I am catching cold, 
because that was the symptom I had experienced earlier, but this was different. I was staying in, at the first floor. So I went to the window and found that the people were coughing and running and then I put my fan on and asked my wife to sit under the concentration of that air so that there's no gas. But I couldn't think anything more because I had read all about the chemicals and how, how to do this. But I, I lost my senses at that moment. Since I was aware of the toxicity of the chemicals, I realized that my time is up. I cannot save myself now. So I started calling my friends who were staying little away and warned them that they should run away because any time the gas could reach their places. But then my wife <laughs> said that uh, you are talking to your friends and making them run away and all that. But you are not bothered about your parents who are in the other room. So the, suddenly I woke up from that inertia and then I knocked the door and I found them in a very bad shape, my brother, my sister, my parents. Then I decided that we should also try to save ourselves. So we ran away from that place after say few hours when the police made an announcement that it's now safe to go back home. We came back, but uh, obviously we were all affected, so that caused lots of problems, health issues, but somehow we survived, but thousands of people died. I asked my parents to move in, a, in an opposite direction, which was towards the new Bhopal city, but then uh, I started moving towards the carbide factory. I thought that I should go and see. So my wife and my sister were with me on the scooter. And the people who saw me moving in that direction, so they started calling me a fool and then say, Mar jayega, sala. You will die. Where are you going? Run in the opposite direction. But then I woke up and I realized that I was making a mistake. Then I took my family away and left at a friend's place who was staying uh, at a place which is Eidgais, which is a higher place. So because gas goes down. Lot of people and relatives uh, of the victims or uh, citizen of this uh, uh, city, uh, they came to uh, Bhopal and they feeling ki they are not like they are uh, they may be dead or somewhere they left from the house. So they are searching around the city and outside the city also and go to the hospitals. So in the hospital just like a, uh, this uh, very, uh, very crowd uh, mob was around the uh, Hamidiya hospital. The dead bodies uh, either dump the lot of dead bodies in this uh, campus. Inside the both the roadside, they collected by the machinery, uh, government machinery, and take that body to the uh, Hamidia hospital, and they post mortem it, and then uh, cause identify the causes of the death. Then I have talked to lot of uh, our friends, and then we'll uh, go to that area, and they, and then we are organizing some support to the those people inside the uh, house and hearts. So we are. And, uh, pulling from there and sent to the hospital. My name is Satinath Charangi and I've been here since right after the disaster.
Sambhavna Clinic came about 12 years after the disaster. The first two years after the disaster, we were fighting with the survivors for better health care. And after that, the government spent quite a bit of money and established a health care system. But after about eight years and nine years of this system, we found that no gas affected people were not getting better by taking so many drugs. You ask them how many medicines have you taken and they would say in kilograms, 40 kilograms and yet they were not getting better. Yeah, I grew up in Delhi, I heard about Bhopal. I was seven years old when this had happened, but like most people in India think, or most people in the world just know that this is something that happened many years ago and everything is all right now. And then in um, 99, uh, people from Bhopal, survivors of the disaster, had gone to U.S. to protest the merger between Union Carbide and Dow Chemical. And this is where they were saying that Dow Chemical ca just cannot buy all the assets of Union Carbide and not talk about its outstanding liabilities. So that's how I came to know about Bhopal in U.S. I was a student there and uh, I got involved and I moved to Bhopal in 2000. 2003 and I've been working with the survivors since then. We provide medical care through three systems. Through the integration of modern medicine, Ayurveda, including Panchakarma and Yoga. Every day between 120 and 150 people come to the clinic. Oftentimes people have to go back because they cannot get doc doctor's appointment the same day. And, but uh, the total number of people who are registered for chronic care is more than 35,000. And this includes people who have been directly exposed to the gas disaster. The major number of people are from there. But also there are people who have suffered uh, due to chronic exposure to contaminated groundwater. And this groundwater again is contaminated by hazardous wastes from the Union Carbide plant that were rec recklessly dumped by the uh, company. Water contamination started back in 1982, two years before the disaster. So even if the gas had leaked, but because how Union Carbide designed their waste management and the way they were dumping all the toxic waste, there are about 48 communities in the area of 64 square kilometers where the groundwater has been contaminated and more than 100,000 people who are drinking contaminated water. If you want to cure a patient, you want you I mean, not only giving a medicine will help him. You want to change his dietary style, you want to change his lifestyle, you want to change his activities if any things are going on. But come on, here, after giving the medicines, he is going to the place which the land is poisonous, water is poisonous and the, everything. I mean, the, it is still toxic, so you can't really correct him. So it is like by medicines we can help to help him or her to an extent, but still the situation is saying so. The protocol in the Virginia they follow the very strictly. But in Bhopal, the some initial some time before, two three times a small leakage. Workers affected some uh, burning eyes, but uh, nobody uh, taken very seriously. <laughs> This is 
not something that happened that Union Carbide Corporation put up a factory here. Uh, you know, this was a disaster in making. This shut down the refrigeration unit here in order to save some $40 a day. The, the, the gas had to be kept at cooling temperature and they shut down the system. They cut down the security forces. Uh, they cut down the training that was being given to security personnel. They stored the this toxic gas in huge containers which they would have never done in US. US. They had a sister plant in US where they were using better materials, smaller tanks, they had uh, better f uh, facilities that were working. This little box has been built with Union Carbide super insulation, which isn't much to look at, just a layer of paper. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, they knew that killing people in India would not have as much, uh, 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 doesn't matter as much. And that is why it is continuing today. Can you imagine in any other, any, any other city where more than 100,000 people are living on a land which is heavily contaminated? Can you imagine that uh, there are still more than 100,000 people which are still sick and do not know what will work for them or children being born with birth defects, that there are six times more birth defects effects being reported in the progeny of the gas affected parents when compared to uh, mothers who were not exposed to uh, gas. Gas mein mein jab, mein paanch saal ki thi, jab gas mein mein jab gas gas to mein <laughs> Mere mammi papa is affected hai, mere bhaiya bhi hai do. वो भी इफेक्टेड है उनकी एक बेटी है तो वो भी इसी की तरह मेरी बेटी की तरह ही है पहले यहां पे आती थी आजकल वो नहीं आती है तो दो बच्चे हमारे यहां इफेक्टेड हैं गैस से एक मेरी बेटी और एक मेरे भाई की बेटी है सर आप बताते हैं बहुत बहुत परेशान थी पब्लिक बहुत करते थे वो जा दुबई भी आता सब परेशान थे कोई कमल उड़ के सोता था कोई उड़ के सोता था बस ऐसा लगता था कि जान बस बच जाए the bird defects and the congenital deformities, again, there has been lack of medical research here, a, a lot of it. Whatever few papers that have been published by independent scientists clearly say that there are problems in the second and even in the third generation of children being born to gas exposed parents and to parents who drank and uh, who continue to drink contaminated water. If you look at the rehabilitation side of it, there are 5,000 women who were giving, who were being given pension of 1,000 rupees per month. Half a million people have gotten $500. And that is all they have received in compensation. The second generation is not even included in that. People who have been drinking contaminated water are not included in that. So, but in the Supreme Court now, there is a petition on revising that amount of uh, compensation uh, for the Bhopal gas victims. And again, uh, you know, uh, government of India is not putting the correct figures of death and injury even in, in that petition. What the people's are, people are having right now is due to the effect the gas had on the neurological system. So it's been like 35 years till the effect is there with them because of the effect of the gas on the nerves actually. When you inspire it, it directly affects your neurological system actually. It directly affects your neurological system. And of course there is like it also gets dissolved in blood. Many people here we call them ghabarat. That's a particular word used for that. That's an unknown sensation of anxiety. Actually, they don't know what is happening, but sometimes at night, sometimes in walking place, they feel like their heart is pumping like anything. They don't know what is happening, but it's common for many persons. I can tell you like 70, 75% are 
persons are having like this sort of mental discomfort. A lot of people around the factory were either daily wage earners, some were even farmers who were farming in that land, but mostly, uh, mostly poor people living around the area. And when they got exposed, when they were gassed on the night, what happened, most of them could not work because it, it had a direct impact on being able to do heavy labor jobs. So a lot of them moved into the area behind the factory, not knowing that that area was contaminated and they were doubly victimized by the uh, contamination. Because they damage all the uh, his uh, organs, most of the body organs, uh, they are not able to breathe, they are not able to uh, uh, saw the things, uh, they are not able to move here and there, they lost the effi uh, efficiency of the body. The only agency that had all the information before the disaster was Union Carbide. And, but Union Carbide is refusing to share this medical information that can be used for treating people. So they are basically showing an outlaw behavior and an inhuman behavior, I will say, because they, all they have to do is share the medical information they have. And that they are saying we won't share because it is trade secret. When Dow Chemical took over Union Carbide, they accepted Union Carbide's liabilities in US. They said, we will give away money to people who have been poisoned by asbestos in US. But when it came to Bhopal, they have a completely double standard. And that has continued on, and it continues on uh, till today. It's not just the world's worst industrial disaster, but also uh, the world's worst corporate massacre, where nobody has been punished for with even a fine or a single day in jail for killing and maiming hundreds and thousands of people and poisoning a new generation. The government is not with the victims. Uh, the corporation obviously is doing everything to buy the government and the US government is doing everything in its power to not uh, so, so that Dow Chemical is never held accountable. So you cannot talk about sustainability and you cannot talk about taking any lessons from Bhopal um, uh, when, you, when the production continues like this. The only lesson that has been learned is by the corporation. And they have learned how to separate its Indian subsidiary or the Brazilian subsidiary from the American subsidiary. That is what they have learned and they have uh, our lawmakers helping them in the process. The problem is that it, it is not just medicines will get them better. They need rehabilitation, they need social support, they need food. And today, because they have lost their, um, their ability to carry on work, they cannot earn enough. And so they, are, they, are, they do not get nutrition. The second generation children had to move out from school and start working early because their parents were not earning money. And yet, the very small amount of compensation that the company has given so far has done nothing. It has only made a joke out of it, a cruel joke. So unless all this happens, unless the corporation actually accepts its responsibility or the government spends some energy looking at the, at the people's needs instead of protecting the interests of the corporations, they only then can people get better. I think Bhopal-like disasters are happening every day. They are slow and silent Bhopals happening everywhere. That is why Bhopal's story is, is so important. And that is why it is important that there is justice in Bhopal.